I am a big fan of when games do just huge lore dumps before the release of a project because it shows you that they have a massive world that you're getting ready to immerse yourself in. And Dragon's Dogma 2 has been doing an admirable job of that with all of the YouTube shorts and everything else they're doing. And over on their website, they've got a ton of great information, including a breakdown of some of the main characters you're going to be meeting along your journey. And there's quite a big list here today. So I'm going to go through this with everybody, get you up to speed on who these people are, what side of the fence they're going to be coming from, and how they might be tying into your journey as an Arisen going through Dragon's Dogma 2, which is out very shortly so hopefully you are prepped and ready to go because this game is going to be consuming a lot of people's lives <laughs> very very shortly because there's a lot going on um, and it's going to be big I mean the map looks massive and it's truly shaping up to be at least at the very least the first big big RPG of 2024 and I know a lot of people are already shouting game of the year from the rooftops um, I need to play it to see but it, you know, there's a lot going on here, which is really cool. So first up on the list of characters, by the way, you can find this over at their website. If you go to dragons dogma, uh, dot com, um, forward slash two, and then they've got a characters tab at the top that you can click on, which leads you to this. So if you want to read into this in greater detail and also do things like get my ugly mug out of the way, because each one of these characters comes with two different screenshots that they show. So as you go down through here, you'll be able to check out a couple of different POVs for these different characters. So if you want to see all this in greater detail, um, definitely head over to their website and check this out. I'm not going to be going through all of the pictures just because um, that's something you can do. Um, Ulrika, it sounds like this is going to be the very first person you meet in your travels because she is the leader of Melv. And it says here, when the Arisen was wounded in the dragon's attack, she nursed them back to health. Now, the fact that they're giving her a name suggests big things, which is cool. I hope she has more of an impact on the story than the girl from the beginning of Dragon's Dogma 1, which I feel like we only ever met that one time and that was it. But she sounds interesting. She looks cool. I love an archer. I love outdoorsy girls. I'm a big fan. Um, says she is a person with a strong sense of responsibility who trains diligently to protect her people. And she's backed up by a pretty badass veteran of the field, which we'll he'll, we'll get to him in a little bit because every story's got to have a grizzled old veteran for the the young the young leader, right? Next up is Nadinia, who is the leader of Batal, which is the other kingdom, the kingdom of the Bistrin, uh, who we've heard about. Um, and says here she is also high priestess to the Lambent Flame. Now I don't know enough about the Lambent Flame. Yet, I'm still getting up to speed with all things Dragon's Dogma 2 and the lore of everything else. Um, but it says here she is she's earned the trust of the people thanks to her kindness and her desire for peace and prosperity in the nation. Which makes me think that if she's aligned with some sort of a religious movement or a religious entity, it can't be all bad if, if, if she's known for her kindness and desire for peace and prosperity, right? But then at the same time, she distrusts pawns in the Arisen. And maybe that's because of the false arisen. I don't know. There's a lot going on here that I just don't understand yet. So it's going to be very interesting to um, meet her and see where that relationship goes and what her beliefs are and everything else. Next up, we've got Brant. He's a paladin. Just say, it says and he doesn't actually say he's a paladin, but he is. He's an honest and righteous captain of the palace guard. That's a paladin, bro. Um, he was demoted for opposing the Queen Regent, who is the one who believes in the False Risen and is corrupting, conniving. It's a Cersei Lannister type, right? He's concerned only in the best interests of the Kingdom of Vermoon, and he offers his cooperation to the cooperation to the Risen, us, because he wants to... He, he needs our help, we know that. He needs our help to overthrow the corrupt Queen Regent, and we also need his help to do the same thing. So it's a mutually beneficial working relationship here. And then we get to... The nastiness herself. The Queen Regent Disa. Uh, queen to the previous sovereign of Vermin, she took charge after his death and schemes to install her beloved son, Sven, as the next king. Um, they call her cool headed and disdainful, with all the grace and haughtiness that royalty brings. I already don't like her. Even if she didn't have a false arisen at her side, I wouldn't like her. Uh, Manella, who is a Bistron leading the guard of the lambent flame, protecting the high priestess and her acolytes. This is another type of paladin. Fiercely loyal to the empress. And she's currently concerned most about discrimination between races and striving to be more righteous herself. There's nothing wrong with being righteous as long as it's not at the expense of zealotry, which leads to discrimination between races. So we'll see how that works out for her. 
Ah, well, Helmina, proprietress of the Rose Chateau, of where I will absolutely be spending many of my free hours. Madam, I am a patron of the arts. <laughs> She's an enigmatic woman combining enchanting charm with intelligence and open-mindedness, the latter of which is why I'm primarily interested. I like open-mindedness. And of course, Sven, the poor youngster, the poor young prince who has no clue that his mother is a conniving evil person. He's very naive, only concerned with what's doing right. He's totally sheltered from the real world, and he's going to have a rude awakening throughout the course of this game. I guarantee it. We have seen his story many times before. It's going to be fraught with sadness and him losing his naivety because he's going to find out that the world is not what he thought it was. Buddy, you are in for a wild ride. I hope you're up for it. Glender, which is uh, one of the first elves I've seen, um, says he's fluent in the human language, has a fascination with the tools that humans use, but he's a horrible archer, which means he's not been able to get into the elven guard. Um, or maybe he has. It just says it's essential for an elven guard, and he's not very good at it, which leads me to assume that he's trying to get in, but he hasn't yet. Um, he says he also has an air of gentleness and timidity that is rare amongst the usually haughty elves. That's probably because he has a disability of some type, so he feels self-conscious about that, and he's struggling to overcome it. It's interesting. Then we have his sister. Um, says she's quiet, refined, with elegant manners, understands a few human, few words of the human language, and is kind and welcoming to those of other races, but it doesn't give us any information about her beyond that. So is she just literally the docile person who stands in the corner and she's just there for set dressing, or is she actually important to the story? We don't know yet. Quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. Be interesting to find out as we get deeper into the game. And of course, the grizzled old war veteran who is uh, advising the young leader, uh, going back to young leader meaning Ulrika. Um, so we've got Leonard. He's a fighter, meister, and swordsman who long served the fortress that she's from. Um, he has long protected the land from the dragon. And though he is currently retired, his skills no sign of show no signs of waning. So he's a middle-aged dude on the back end of his prime, but he's still able to keep up with the youngsters for the most part. Um, give him another decade. He's, he's got at least that in him. And we'll see where it goes. He may be a tragic figure in this story. It remains to be seen. But if I was a betting man... I would say he's going to have a tragic story because we gotta, we gotta, we gotta give Ulrika something to rise above. Um, Sigurd, for some reason, this guy hates dragons, which makes me believe he's got a personal vendetta, um, and he just wants to take them all out. Uh, says he's a quiet man with an inquisitive mind, a mystic spearhead meister. He's constantly training to improve his fighting skills and unique style, and he's obsessed, obsessed. The wording says with the extermination of dragon kind. Something happened to him when he was a child. He was traumatized by dragons somehow. Family members, friends, beloved, we don't know. But I'm sure we'll be finding out more of his story as we get deeper into the game once we meet him. And then finally, Luz, who is a court oracle and trickster meister from Vermund, from the court. She's currently in hiding because she spoke out against the false arisen uh, taking the throne. So she's definitely going to be somebody we're going to be meeting. If I had to bet, uh, we'll meet her early on in the game, and she'll probably end up being some sort of a mentor. I don't know. But if I was a betting man, which I've bet on multiple things in this video, it could be the case. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of companions to go through, everybody. And again, if you want to read more about this, you can go over to their website. Um, and check it out at your leisure. Check out all the screenshots they get of the characters. I can't wait to learn more. I don't know if this is a full list, if we're going to see more of these, but anything that comes up, I'm going to be covering here on the channel. So if you want more Dragon's Dogma 2 news, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams happen between here and on Twitch. I play a lot of different games. Check out the playlists. 
Uh, there's a Discord, there's a Patreon. I write fantasy and sci-fi. Links are down below. And of course, I'll be streaming all of Dragon's Dogma 2 and doing a Let's Play series, guides, and more. So hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Happy gaming.